Hello, my name is Michelle Crespo. I apologize in advance for the poor lighting in the room, um, but my face is not important, my voice is. So I'm going to be discussing the models of communication that we learned throughout writing this uh, assignment, well, these two assignments embedded into one pretty much, because I think that it was something that helped me realize some of the things I was already doing as a leader in education, but some of the things that I also could incorporate into um, my college career and my personal life. So let's get into it. There are three models that were discussed in research. There was the linear slash transmission one, the interactive model of communication, and then the transactional one. So the first one, linear transmission, it's a one-way conversation. So it has a sender, the sender delivers the message and the message is received. There's no type of interaction, it's no engagement, it's just here's the information and that is all. So that could be a memo, a pre-recording like this, broadcast television. When you're watching the news, you cannot interact with the news. It's happening live. Some speeches uh, and board announcements. So as a teacher, this is an education program. As a teacher, I work online and I post announcements. Those announcements for the beginning of the week they do not have the option to engage with me. However, they do have the option to send me an email, but it's still considered linear communication because they cannot respond to the information I gave them. Now, the purpose of something like that linear um, communication is to get across just information, like broad information you want someone to know. A good example, um, one that I mentioned in my essay was I work in education. When I have to have a meeting regarding the data collected from progress monitoring um, tests that we take, we took, I like to pre-send out some of the things we'll be talking about. Now, that is not going to be, um, that is going to be linear because they can't respond to that just yet. They just know here's the agenda. Here's what we're gonna be talking about. Here's the time, the date. Here is um, the data by the way, um, and so they are prepared for when we do have an actual meeting on the content being sent in that linear form of communication. The second one was interactive. Let me move my face. I don't know if it's in the way for you, but it's in the way for me. <laughs> so the second uh, model was interactive. So obviously in the name, there's interactions, you get to have engagement, you get to ask questions, you get to clarify any information that you didn't understand, you get to build a relationship. So it's less about the content of what you're talking about. It's more about the delivery and how you're receiving that information because you're building a connection, you're building a relationship. So that's face-to-face -face conversations, video conferences, telephone calls, stuff like that, uh, text messages, social media. You are able to share um, information, you as the sender, and then you are able to receive. There's engagement there. Some of the discussion posts that we do, uh, at school in this program, those are all interactive because you get you get to interact with your peers. Interactive communication is important because as I stated, it builds relationships. So when you are a leader, you want to build positive relationships with whomever you are in charge of. If you're working uh, where you are dealing with consumers, you want to make sure you're building relationships and that those interactions, especially face-to-face, -face, clarify any doubts, clarify any questions that those customers have. So interactive is very important for what we call networking. Right? And last but not least, let me move my face again, <laughs> transactional, which to me is the one that I like to use the most. And it's a bit challenging sometimes because I work online. So transactional is two-way, just like interactive. However, it has rapid and immediate feedback for the person 
who is sending out the information. So let's say that I am preparing for an interview and I go to my friend and I am practicing in front of her. She is giving me rapid, immediate feedback to improve the quality of what I am giving her. So the purpose here is to give that immediate feedback, but then also to receive something from that immediate feedback. Now, I'm going to give an example from education because that's the field that I am in. That's the field that we are studying. Um, one thing that I do online when my students write an essay, I teach ELA, they do conference with me if they've scored uh, below a certain grade average. We conference right away and we go through their essay. We talk about some things that they needed to improve on. They give me their feedback on what they think they need to improve on. And then they're given the opportunity to resubmit that assignment. So they not only receive feedback, but the feedback has intention behind it. The intention is to improve the quality of whatever was sent. Okay? So that's where I believe transactional should focus on because it's not just feedback to give feedback, it's feedback with intention to improve something. Okay? And examples are face-to-face, -face, phone call, video conference, similar to interactive chat rooms and uh, trainings as well. Now, how is this uh, relevant to leadership or why is it? Well, because as a leader, you need to know how to effectively communicate in all three models. You need to make sure that the linear communication you are sending out does not contain tones. People can perceive what you say in different ways, depending on their backgrounds, um, especially if they maybe don't speak the uh English language as their first language, sometimes things don't translate the same as somebody who speaks Spanish, right? That might not translate the same, translate the same. Uh, it also is important and interactive because you need to make sure that you are clarifying when you're interacting with your um, consumers or anyone you're working with your colleagues and especially transactional if you are let's say a principal and you are giving a, an observation you are giving constructive feedback um, with intention of improving that teacher's ability to teach but also improving the quality of teaching your students receive okay um, and that's all i have for you guys i hope that this was less than seven minutes because I think that's what it had to be. <laughs>